Let go by foot. Okay. Um, thanks. Uh, thanks for that introduction, Steffi. Um, as Steffi says, I'm Yin Kaduke. I'm the Africa editor of Stem Semaphore, and um, Steffi did such a good job of explaining what Semaphore is. Uh, your checks in the post. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we, we're a year old now, and um, I'm focused on the African continent. And in our newsrooms, we have many discussions, as every newsroom does. And when it comes to Africa, a lot of our discussions are often about this huge uh, demographic dividend and whether it's a problem, a challenge, or it's an opportunity. And um, the reason I'm excited about this particular panel is because they're, they're two very different types of entrepreneurs, two very different types of innovators, but in a funny kind of way, they're solving the same problem sort of in a continuum. Um, what Herbert is going to talk to you about, um, who's one of Nigeria's foremost entrepreneurs, leading banker, the biggest banking group, um, his vision now for a, uh, a private university which really uh, shakes up the traditional university model, um, the entrepreneurship uh, at scale approach that Helmut has developed here in Munich and as uh, Steffi said, on a, on, a, on a European basis. There's something there about, I love the way those two things kind of flow together and we're going to get into uh, chat today. So first, let's have Herbert up, uh, who's going to give us a quick introduction, but as Helmut as well, please both come up. Thank you. We're going to let uh, Helmut go first, and uh, Herbert, I keep on mixing the two names up. So. <laughs> very, very close. <laughs> very close. Uh, Herbert's going to give us a bit of his vision so, about... Sometimes I wonder where my German <laughs> heritage came from. <laughs> <laughs> well, the theme of this conference, Dare to Know, was originally a Latin phrase, sapere audi, and it loosely translates to have courage to use reason. The Roman poet Horace used the same phrase to mean the value of human endeavor, persistence in reaching a goal, and the need to overcome challenges. My address to you today will encompass all of these ideas, all of them. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure and privilege to share a vision that I believe will shape the destiny of Africa and the global community. Now, as visionaries, our responsibility is to conceive a future that others have not dared to imagine. And in the context of my beloved continent, the Western world is gradually awakening to a truth. And the truth is one that we in Africa have long recognized. In October, the New York Times, in a particular article, um, mentioned that the world is becoming African. And this proclamation is acknowledged by several statements, and one of them is forecasting that by the year 2050, 2050, not too long from now, one in every four people on Earth will be African. Now, the unique thing about this proclamation is that this is, what, 26 years away from now, and we have enough people and enough women to ensure that that happens. So it's no longer a statistic, it's going to happen, given <laughs> the population growth rate we see in the continent. Now, this evidence is palpable in the rhythms of music that you hear all over the world, and it resonates with the entrepreneurial zeal that we see in our youth in Africa and the urgency that which we seek you know, for, for employment opportunities for all of them. But this is true. It is true that we have the demographics, but it does not also show the entire picture. Demographics do not determine destiny, but they provide a very powerful and precious opportunity for all of us. Now, as Africa's population burgeons in size and influence, it is poised to become the youngest on the planet Earth with an average age of 19 years. Now, when you look at this and compare it to the Western world, I think in the US it's about 36. Um, yes, in China, um, in the 20s, in India, about 19. But it just shows you what is happening across the world and what is happening in Africa, where that mean age is just about 19. 
It speaks to so much. It speaks to the levels of creativity you're going to see. It speaks to the growth in the continent. If we channel our resources in the right direction, there's just so much, so much to be done. So like I would say, for this emerging generation, it is our collective duty to prepare them for a future of growth and innovation, as well as ensuring that they're equipped with the skills and knowledge required to address most of the world's most pressing needs. I believe that the trajectory of Africa is on the upward spring, and that the world will increasingly turn to our continent for leadership if we get it right. And this makes it imperative that we train our youth and make sure that they are all ready for this great challenge ahead of us. But to achieve this, we must expand the focus of our economic development beyond the base of the pyramid. If we desire increased economic opportunities globally, given what we see as the emerging population trend, we must foster the growth of a stable African middle class with locally acquired skills and leadership. Now, this transformation can only be realized through strategic investments in education. There is no other thing you do that can change the continent than investing in education. Now, regrettably, UNESCO has a report that laments the persistently low access to universities and colleges even as this, as this enrollment surges because of the growing population. The system is starved of funding precisely at this time when the population is aching to learn and wanting to take advantage of our rapid growth. Now, for those of us who have succeeded in the continent in building thriving businesses and who yearn for comprehensive economic growth, we understand that we cannot afford to wait for these challenges to self-resolve. The talents of our population and the next generation are far too precious to be squandered. That was why I started Howe Foundation, which I chair, and I propelled it to launch Wigwe University. The initiative is designed to empower the continent's youth to spearhead global leadership, innovation, and progress. And as we say, the whole idea is to create a new generation of responsible, fearless leaders that will transform Nigeria and the continent. But I don't think it's just Africa, because I think the whole world is craving for much better, much greater, and much more responsible leadership. Our vision is nothing less than the transformation of tertiary education in Africa to help the continent live from the world as a global leader in innovation and development. Higher education has the capacity, like we all know here, to ensure and to create a transformative force for Africa, and in turn, I think we have the capacity, all right, and the power to revolutionize it. So Wigwe University is dedicated to training and mentoring the next generation of fearless African leaders, entrepreneurs, and innovators. It is a homegrown institution constructed by Nigerians, for Africans, and for the global community. It sits on 600 hectares of land in River State, and I believe in the next couple of years, we will be able to get our student population, perhaps in five years, to about 11,400 students and 400 faculty and staff. In its inaugural year, which starts in, I think, 252 days, if I'm not mistaken, we will onboard 1,400 students with a diverse faculty recruited from Europe, from Asia, from North America, and of course, from the continent. Our vision for Higher education in Africa transcends traditional boundaries, emphasizing on leadership, entrepreneurship, and innovation. 30% of our entire academic curriculum basically focuses on these elements, irrespective of what you're studying. Whether you're in the College of Creative Arts, or you're studying law, or you're studying medicine, you have to run these, three, these programs all through your university degree. You'll be taught, you'll be mentored, and all of that. So it becomes an integral part of of the people we are creating. We are cultivating a culture of innovation, endowing students with the practical skills of critical thinking, problem solving, and leadership itself. Our students will dare to know. We have meticulously crafted a world-class and disciplined academic curriculum aligned with the future and approved by the relevant regulatory authorities. Our innovative cross-disciplinary and professional skills certification infused curriculum features strong foundations in leadership and entrepreneurship, as well as innovation. And of course, a hybrid learning, student, learning model 
will arm students with the skills required to thrive in the fourth industrial revolution. We're deploying most of what you know out here, cutting edge technologies, inclusive of holograms, data analytics, renewable energy, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, all of those things. Basically, we're leapfrogging from where we are to where most of the Western world is, and perhaps even better. There'll be compulsory internships for all Uyghur University students, which will be facilitated, facilitated at our partner institutions worldwide. We've established research centers and are fostering international collaboration with top universities, institutions, and global science enterprises. Our academic faculty and partners will contribute valuable practical experience to enrich our student educational journey. Our commitment extends to heavy investment in infrastructure, an area where African universities face challenges. Even as we are starting, we have already invested in a 10 megawatt power plant for the university. We own our own fiber optic internet and sports facilities built to world-class standards of FIFA, IAAF, and the NBA. We have a world-class performance arts center, complete with Broadway standard stage, outdoor amphitheater, and sound stage, as well as editing suites, most of which are still under construction. Additionally, I'm sure most of these people here would not know this because you wouldn't have the opportunity of seeing it in certain parts of Germany. We have our university farm, which will not only support the university, but also the local community and will also facilitate research initiatives. The motto of our university is, we the fearless, embodying our collective identity and focusing the character of our future graduates. However, for this audacious vision to materialize, we need you. We need you, the visionaries beyond Africa, to be fearless as well. Currently, we are witnessing a brain drain where some of our brightest minds are departing for wealthier countries. Now, this is not a random exercise or occurrence. It is a deliberate effort by the Western universities and employers to exploit African talents and resources. So we have international students, for instance, including those from China, from India, and Nigeria, who have contributed about $50 billion to the British economy, for instance, in the year following the, the pandemic, with a significant number of them choosing not to return home. That is the concept of brain drain. So they come and get trained here and get the skills, and they don't go back home. Meanwhile, we've paid all their school fees. It's a very interesting concept. The UK's National Health Service, for instance, also employs about 50,000 African nationals, mostly from Sub-Saharan Africa, a figure that has more than doubled in the past decade. So it is a time to cease viewing Africa as merely a source of resources and people to be exploited. There is not much difference between cutting away extracted natural resources and luring away some of our best minds. No difference whatsoever. Some people speak about international aid. So while international aid is crucial for many parts of Africa, undermining our middle class and the next generation of leaders weakens the impact of that aid. Of what essence is the aid, therefore? The waves of migration that we see that are straining your political and social landscape should therefore not come as a surprise. The best place to limit migration is not in the Mediterranean or in the English Channel, but within the home countries, our own home countries, where people are desperate to live for greater opportunities. Growing prosperity within these countries, as many of us know from our own experiences, is achievable through better quality education. If you don't solve that problem with us and provide better quality education, you'll be fighting these problems forever, all of these migration problems. The world has opened up to one marketplace. Therefore, I implore you to be fearless as well. Success should not be measured by extracting funds from Africa to support your universities and schools, or recruiting African nurses to fill your hospitals. We need the partnership of your universities for faculty exchange, for joint research projects, 
and student mobility programs, fostering a culture of excellence and global citizenship that operates in both directions. While we certainly need our own governments across Africa to prioritize education across infrastructure gaps, address infrastructure gaps, enhance faculty development, and support research and development, we also need partnerships between governments and the, pri and the private sector, as well as philanthropic organizations. Above all, we need you, the visionaries of the world, to recognize Africa, especially its rising generation, as a source, as a source of hope and opportunity for the whole world. Africa's rising generation possesses the potential to drive massive and positive global change, but it requires our collective effort, all of us here, and a shared commitment to investing in their future and building their leadership skills. This is the fearless vision we hold for Wigwe University and for universities across the continent. In conclusion, my words are not just a call to action. Our vision is a promise and a commitment to a shared future, which I'm sharing with you, where the world can become more African, and Africa is truly world class. So in the spirit of this conference, I challenge you all to dare to know. I challenge you to share our vision of Africa and to join us in creating an exciting future where our young people can find the opportunities that they seek. A future they can be confident that the higher education they need to lead the way towards a better Africa is at home and not several thousands of miles unreachable for most of them. Come with us. We are fearless and we collectively dare to know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Herbert, for that. Um, there's so much to get into, and I, I want to come back to you with a couple of follow-up questions to get yeah. into some of the details. But I'll go to Helmut next, because I, I wanted to make clear for everyone here the kind of link there is between the work you've been doing here in Munich and you know, how it connects to this next generation, what happens after people graduate from Wigway University or any university, frankly, um, how it works, the kind of systems that get built and the problems you start to solve you know, at scale uh, for entrepreneurs. Yeah, so first of all, it's really amazing what Herbert is doing for Africa and also for the whole world. And I think that's, we are talking about the next generation of education and I think the next, the next phase will be a joint effort. So, it's not only that academics do education, especially in entrepreneurship, yeah. Herbert, but it's that every, every people who have the knowledge and the resources really work together. And so it's amazing that Herbert, and he's, he's not only like the initiator of, of the university, he's also the ro role model. So if you look of your career, what you were, you were doing, I think hundreds of thousands of of young students are looking at you and say, hey, I also want yeah. to be a Herbert. And this is so important. You're, you're, you're not only a role model, but you are now creating this institution. And so I think this is the next phase. And this is also what we experienced in Munich. We also have great entrepreneurial role models and industrial families. So at TUM, it's Susanne Klatten, for example, and she um, gave me the chance as the next generation to found the Entrepreneurship Center. And so Susanne not only financed it in the, in the first phase, but she stayed also on the board now for over 20 years as the chairwoman. And I hope, Herbert, you are not only giving the money, but you're also um, advising well. yeah. and, and coaching. And I think this is the next wave of great universities will be the ones where the knowledge comes together, and so I, I really love what you're doing, Herbert. Thank you, Helmut. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, how, <laughs> so how how has it how has, <clears throat> excuse me how has it worked here in in Munich in terms of building these systems to get more entrepreneurs? Because you've what you had you were say 15 unicorns so far. Yeah. Have gone so, through through your programs. 
So listen uh, to how we do this. As, as Herbert said, it's, it's mission driven. Okay, so you, you have to have this goal of really creating impact, changing the world. And as, as leaders, as the founders of a university, or I'm serving as a vice president of TUM, we clearly, with the president, with the whole board, say we are the entrepreneurial university. Yeah. And this means that students should think about how can they create impact, how they can learn the tools to be innovative, to create value, but then also start to implement. And not only like five years after they graduate from university, right. but while they are in our university. And this is what, what Janning is now referring, it becomes a huge machine. So our university creates about 25% of all high growth companies in Germany. It's, a, it's an amazing flow of startups. So in our two venture labs, which is like the machine room of the tech startups, we have 400 candidates, 400 project teams lined up. And so last year we had 100 financing rounds of our companies um, and gaining about 2 billion US dollars of venture capital creating value, company value of 5 to 10 billion. And this is a university, okay? And this can be done by one university. And so we need more of these universities, not only in Bavaria, not only in Germany, not only in Europe, but worldwide. And this is why it's so important what Herbert is doing also in Africa. And hopefully he will be his role model will be also seen in Africa, and there are many more great countries in Africa, and ho hopefully they pick up this, this momentum you're Absolutely. producing. Yeah. So, so I, I, I have a bias towards all this. I, I, I think entrepreneurship makes so much sense, but um, I just for the philosophers in the room or whoever it is, I mean, who's going to teach? Where will students learn all the other subjects if everybody's going down this kind of entrepreneurship route? Is it that you believe that there's some enough for everyone in that kind of model that the people who gravitate towards this will, will go do this or do you think this model should just apply across universities in general? Yeah, I think it's, I think every at least um, technical university and every university who's on an impact mission should do it and as Herbert said it's a lot about leadership, it's a lot about entrepreneurship mm -hmm. but it's also a lot about technology because our students have to learn the tools, apply the tools, and then build the solution. So we have to have the technology um, capacity. And last but not least, and this applies not only to Europe and Africa, but the whole world, we, we need also this sustainable mindset that our next generation of entrepreneurs understand that they not only create money value, but also solutions for a sustainable world. Absolutely. Right, right. You, you talked about... Um uh, scalability there. When you, if you in five years have 10,000, 10, you're starting at 1,400 now, yeah. you'll have 10,000 plus, yeah. I think it was in five years. These are incredible numbers for a new university, but still a drop, as you know, it is. Uh, in, in, a, in an ocean, yeah. uh, especially when you think about the size of the population, even if it's just Nigeria alone, yeah. it's 200 million today, yeah. and you know, five years, who knows what that will be. Yeah. How does this um, kind of thing, and it doesn't have to just be Wigwe University, I'm yeah. just trying to understand how you think about this. Um, how can this work at scale to get to even more students? Yeah. Because this is clearly a challenge yeah. that we have right across the continent, yeah. um, being able to get more people. Okay. So, you can, I mean, you know, one of the things that would happen definitely is that this initiative will give the impetus to other people who can afford it to start mm -hmm. to build mm -hmm. and impact knowledge on the next set of generation. Now, one of the things you find in the Western world is impact giving. There are people who have resources in Africa um, who are not doing what they ought to do. And I'm yet to see anybody who's had so much wealth and died and they've reminded, people have rem remembered him a hundred years after. Well, the only thing you're remembered for is what impact you made. Mm. But I'll tell you something. Sometimes it requires one person to make a massive change. Um, and I think that even though you will have things around entrepreneurship being taught across the entire university, all right, um, it just takes one massive idea from any of them 
to ignite the change that we're looking for, if you get the point I'm trying to make. Mm. 10,000 people may appear to be a drop in the ocean, given the size of our overall population. But quite frankly, you know, one, two, three, four, five gems can change everything. That's one. Now, let's speak about leadership. All we need is a new revolution, a new set of young people who are fearless and who have been trained into their mindsets as to what they can do in the country. Mm. In 15 years' time, I believe that coming out of Wigwe University, for instance, you have a new set of guys who will be governors of states, for instance. You have people who will be running big businesses, etc. That generation can change our country and our continent. It took 25 years for the massive change you saw in, in, Singa in Singapore. All right? Mm. That change starts from one day. Cast your mind back. You'll see that 25 years is yesterday, mm. if you get the point I'm trying to make. So I think that this initiative, in terms of scale, all right, may appear to be a drop in the ocean, but it grows significantly, and you'll start to see the impact as several other people replicate it. And mm. it will happen. Mm. It will happen. I'll go over to Helmut. I, 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 I'm, just, I'm interested in how you think about the, the biggest problems you try to solve uh, with your model and how you know that can be applied beyond uh, Munich, beyond uh, your university. It's like also if you build a university and an entrepreneurship center, it's like building a, also a growth company. So right, and you need great people in the company. So a great management team, a, gr a, a great team who's doing it. You need great lecturers, but you also need people who know how to incubate, you need VC people who know how to attract money. So it's a huge, you need a huge team and then it's a growth path. So we, we also start really small with five people. So in, in my initial business plan, I said Unternehmer Tomb should have five people. Right. Now we have 500 employees. And it's also for us really a challenge to, to serve tens of thousands of students, serve hundreds of startups and it's a constant a constant challenge to go this growth path and then uh, as herbert said it's it's also a, a global ambition so it's not only like nigerians work together in teams yeah. or, or germans but if we really want to solve global problems we need well, global teams yeah. 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 yeah and i think this is then for us <laughs> both the, the next challenge is how can we do this so how can we bring Leverage. people together from different continents, tackle these problems, and then scale them. And what have you done in that, in that sense? I know I was reading some background on, on, on your model, and you had a very diverse kind of like entrepreneurs from different countries. Is that, that, was that intentional, or is it just something that happened over time? Did you actually go out and seek people? Exactly, and, and what's really nice now is that so people from all over the world see what's happening here in Munich. So, if you look at the numbers, we have 50,000 students and 40% are n not from Germany, 40%. And I looked up the numbers, so about 5% are African. Yeah. And this is super, okay? So, and, and people and are great ambassadors go back in their yeah. countries, but then we can build businesses together. Yeah. But I think we are, we are at the beginning, beginning right now. And so right now in the moment, what we, we, we are doing, we try to build a network of Europe, it's only the European game is difficult, so we try to, to get the European market under one umbrella so that a European startup wants to go to like Finland or enter the, the, the um, Spanish market or the Italian market to do this. Yeah. And I think next step should be that we do it cross continents. That would be a dream, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a similar vision in terms of, I mean, I know you talked about it being Pan-African, uh, you make, do you have any sort of model or approach to try and pull in more? I, I, attended, a, I, I attended a very interesting uh, meeting two days ago, um, just learning from the type of things that Helmut is speaking about. Academia is moving in a very interesting direction, calling for greater collaboration. And um, I was speaking to people who are going to be involved in our College of Creative Arts, who are going to come and start to layer things upon what we do. All right, these people don't live in Nigeria, they're in the US. Some of them are in the UK, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they see the need for greater collaboration. So you can extend yourself far beyond your um, immediate precinct, if you get the point of right. So those are all the things that we're doing. And you see it um, in the partnerships that we're all building. Part of what he just mentioned, mm -hmm. all right? So once those partnerships exist, the quality of the education which you have at any one point in time is so much better. But it's not just about the education. 
It's about how do you place these people? How do you make sure that they're not job seekers, but job creators, if you get the point I'm trying to make? How do you make them have access to venture capital, all right, which he mentioned, and speaking about mission critical from day one, these guys are actually in the practice of creating wealth on a sustainable basis for a better future. Mm. So it's, it's happening, and I truly and completely believe in, in what he said. Okay, fantastic. It looks like we've run out of time, so I'm just going to try and wrap up with... Um, excuse me, a bit of cough. Uh, with one quick question to both of you, which is um, like five years from now, uh, will you have... Uh, what, 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 what will be your kind of um, vision for where you are with... Uh, the university and, and, the, and your platform, particularly thinking about the African opportunity. How, how are you thinking about it five years from now? So uh, continue this entrepreneurial journey and really contributing to a sustainable world. And what would be super in five years, if, Herbert, if we sit here and say, okay, these are now like the, the five super um, entrepreneurial stories of our students. Yep. Yeah, and they right. solved real problems um, and um, uh, build up great companies, created jobs, and uh, uh, contribute to a sustainable world. So then I would be happy. Yep. Well, in my own case, I think uh, my thinking is that the world is, is, is craving for much better leadership, is craving for more love, um, is craving for forgiveness. Um, I think it's payback time, if you ask me. Um, in a different context, I think that um, the world has to look at Africa and ensure there's greater collaboration. Otherwise, we'll keep moving around in circles. Right. I think in five years, if I find coming out of Nigeria, many better quality students and entrepreneurs have come out through partnerships, for instance, with, right. with Helmut and the Western world, and we don't have to travel all over the world, and we don't find our people stranded overseas uh, because they're seeking education, that would be progress for me. Because all of that will ensure that we have better quality Africa, we have better you know, growth in Africa as far as GDP is concerned, better living standards, greater financial inclusion, and all of that. Yeah, that, that's a great vision. Uh, please join me in thanking our excellent panelists. Thank you.